Hello, sports fans and baseball fans and Stratomatic baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z. Bob Zolke, and I'm back again with another in my series of All-Star Game. Basically, it's an All-Star Game playoff. And last week, I had posted the 1933 American League versus the 1983 American League, with the 1983 American League being the home team. And today we have the 1983 National League taking on the 1933 National League. And the home team in this case will be the 1933 team. So we will um, have that game for you. Uh, the matchup for today's game in the pitching department will be Steve Rogers for the visiting 1983 National League. And Hal Schumacher will be the starting pitcher for the 1933 uh, National League team. And so we will get on with the lineups. First for the 1983 National League. All right, so here is the lineup for the 1984 National League team. Batting first is going to be Tim Raines, double-A Steeler. Batting second will be Andre the Hawk Dawson, the center fielder. Or no, he, he'll be the DH, actually. Dale Murphy will be the center fielder, and he's batting third. Then Michael Jack Schmidt will be the third baseman, batting in the cleanup spot. Gary Carter will be the catcher for the 1984 National, or 1983 National League team. Daryl Evans will be the first baseman. Then George Hendrick in right field. Ozzie Smith at shortstop. And Glenn Hubbard, the second baseman. That is your 1983 National League All-Star lineup. All right, so uh, with that having been done and out of the way, we have Tim Raines as the first batter, and he is the left fielder, and he will be uh, facing Hal Schumacher. And that is a 6-9, and Tim Raines would be batting left, so 6-9 is going to be a strikeout. Tim Raines is out, and that brings up Andre the Hawk Dawson. And uh, Andre Dawson today is the DH. Of course, he was a very good defensive center fielder, but Dale Murphy will be the center fielder today, so he will be the DH. He gets a 3-9, and that is also going to be a strikeout. So, um, just, uh, ooh, Hal Schumacher strikes out the first two batters he faces. And that brings to the plate Dale Murphy. Mighty Dale, here he is, 6'9", and I believe we already said that that is going to be a strikeout, and it is. So Hal Schumacher struck out the side there. We go to the bottom of the first inning. And uh, now we're in the bottom of the first. I will go over the 1933 National League lineup. So here is the lineup for the 1933 National League or All-Star team. Uh, Pepper Martin will be the leadoff hitter, playing third base. Bill Terry will bat second and be the first baseman. Batting third, you got Lefty O'Doul. And then Chuck Klein batting in the cleanup spot. Wally Berger will be the center fielder. Gabby Hartnett will be the catcher. Then Frankie Frisch, the second baseman. Chick Hafey, 
will be batting eighth. And batting ninth will be the shortstop, Dick Bartell. And that is your 1933 National League lineup. Okay, so Pepper Martin is the first batter. He gets a 3-5, and uh, that's going to be a double. Lead-off double for the 1933 National League. And a uh, hit allowed to the first batter Steve Rogers faces brings up Bill Terry, the first baseman for the team. And he gets a ground ball, first base, A. So the runner will hold. And that is a ground out three. Lefty O'Doul is up. There's one out, man on second. He gets a 1-8. That is a ground ball, second base, A. Two away. He goes out four to three. And that brings up Chucky Klein. Are they going to strand the man at second? That's the question. There is a 5-9, and that is going to be a ground ball, first base, and he is out. So it's 0-0, going to the top of the second inning. Mike Schmidt is the batter, the third baseman for the 1983 team. And he gets a 5-12. That is going to be a ground ball to the pitcher, uh, Hal Schumacher, and Schumacher is a 1-E-6. That is a 13. We will see what that gets him. Probably an out somehow, some way. Uh, it will be a on his card, or on his air rating, uh, and his air rating is an E-6, so we'll roll the dice, re-roll the dice for the error rating. It's a 10. And that is going to be a ground ball. So he's out. He goes out one to three. Brings up Gary Carter. The catcher. He gets a 5'11". And that's going to be a fly ball to right field. The right fielder for the 1933 team is... Um, a 2E3, that is an 11, and uh, that's going to be on his card also. That is a 7 on an E3, and that is going to be an out. So he flies out to right, F9, and that brings um, Daryl Evans to the plate. He is the first baseman today. He gets a 6-7. And that's going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. All X's this inning. And he is a 2-E-17. That is an 18, probably an out. And it is. So he goes out 4-3. And no runs come in for the 1983 team. And that brings Wally Berger to the plate. Wally Berger for the 1933 team against Steve Rogers. He gets a 4-9. That is going to be a ground ball to the third baseman. So he goes out 5-3. Gabby Hartnett is the batter. He gets a 1-9, and that's going to be a home run. Gabby Hartnett hits a jack, and uh, that is going to be a 1-0 lead. Second, That is the second hit allowed by Rodgers and the first earned run. Frankie Frisch is the batter now. And he gets a 3-5, and that's going to be a pop-out to first. So there's two down. And Chick Hafey is the batter. He gets a 4-5. 
that is going to be a fly ball right field. But the uh, 1933 team does grab a one nothing lead on a home run by Gabby Hartnett, and George Hendrick is the batter for the 1983 team. Trying to break through on Hal Schumacher, he gets a 5-4, and that is going to be a... That's going to be an out. It is a fly ball left field. Hendrick goes F7. Ozzie Smith is the batter. He gets a 1-4. That's going to be a fly ball left field. So two fly outs to left. And Glenn Mother Hubbard, the second baseman for the 1983 team, he gets a 5-4. That is going to be a fly ball to left. So all three batters this inning flew out to left field. No runs for the 1983 team. We go to the bottom of the third, and Rick Farrell is the, or Rick, Dick Bartell, not Rick Farrell. He, is, he was probably on the American League 1933 team, but this is Dick Bartell. And he gets a 6-9, and 6-9 is going to be a strikeout. So Roger strikes out a guy. That's his first strikeout of the game. That I have anyway, yeah. Pepper Martin. Pepper Martin gets a 6-9. That is a, also a strikeout. So that's the second strikeout. I guess Rogers is lobbying to stay in this game even though he's down one nothing, And that is going to be a lost dice. Okay, procure, I have procured another dice, so we will re-roll for Terry. He gets a 6-4, um, and that will be a single. That is a ballpark single. So Bill Terry gets a hit, breaking up the monotony. Um, that is a third hit allowed by Rogers. Lefty O'Doul gets a 4-9. And that will be a fly ball left field. So no runs come in again for the 1933 National League. They do get a guy on, but they don't score. And it remains one nothing going to the top of the fourth for the 1983 team with the reins up. He gets a 5-7, and that is going to be a fly ball to center field. Reigns, of course, the leadoff batter, so um, there's one down. Andre Dawson gets a 411. 411. They're getting bad rolls here. Um, and that is going to be a fly ball left field. The left fielder for the 1933 team is a 3E5. That is a 13. Let's roll it. 8, E5. That is going to be a fly ball. So he's out. And Dale Murphy. Mighty Dale is up. He gets a 1, 4. And that is a ballpark single. Yes. So I think that's maybe the first hit for the 1983 team off of Schumacher. It is indeed. And Mike Schmidt, Michael Jack Schmidt is up. He gets a 4-6. And that, my friends, is going to be a single double asterisk. And so now all of a sudden they have two runners on. When they, uh, two, they have two hits, in fact off of Schumacher when they were unable to even touch him up until now. Gary Carter is up, but there are two out. And he gets a 5-7, and that is going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. The second baseman is a 2-E44. 
Um, so, or wait a minute. No, nope. he is a 2E14. And that is an 18 second base. Probably going to be an out, and it is. So Carter goes four to three. And the 83 team threatens in the fourth, but they don't score. It is still one nothing. Now remember, well, I, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to mention what happened in the American League game. You'll have to go over and watch it. But Chuck Klein is up. And if you're watching and you did watch that, then you know what I was about to get at. Um, but uh, that is going to be a single. So Chuck Klein gets aboard with a single. Rogers giving up his fourth hit. Wally Berger, we're in the bottom of the fourth. And it's 1-0, 1933 NL. Uh, that is a 4-10. And that is going to be a catcher card X. The catcher for the 1933 team is a 1-E-4. Oh, a 1 and a 2, that is going to be a pass ball followed by a pop-out. So um, Klein will go to second base. And Hartnett is up with one out and a runner at second base. He gets a 1-9, and that is going to indeed be a home run. So Hartnett hits a two-run homer. And that really opens up things for the, uh, for the 1933 National League. Rogers gives up his fifth hit and two more earned runs. It is only 3 nothing, but they really have not been able to touch Schumacher. And um, Frankie Frisch is the batter with only one out. And he gets a 3-8, and that's going to be a ground ball second base. So he's out 4-3. And Chick Hafey is up. And he gets a 6-8, and that is going to be a strikeout. So Rogers strikes out another guy. That's three strikeouts, but he gives up two more runs, and it is 3-0 1933 National League over the 1983 National League with Daryl Evans up. Daryl Evans gets a 1-4, and that is going to be a home run. And so Daryl Evans gets the 83 team on the board. And that is a hit and an earned run given up by Hal Schumacher. So it's 3-1 now. 3-1, 1933 National League over 1983 National League. George Hendrick is up. He gets a 4-7, and that is going to be a walk. So now all of a sudden Schumacher is falling apart a little bit. Which gives way to Ozzie Smith, the Wizard of Oz. And he gets a 5-7. That is going to be a fly ball center field. So there's one down. Runner at first. Glenn Mother Hubbard up. He gets a 3-5. And 3-5 is going to be a single double asterisk. And now the 1983 American League, or National League, finds themselves... In business here. As Schumacher gives up another hit. And is, uh, as I say, seems to be falling apart at the seams here. Tim Raines is up. He gets a 5-10. He's batting left. And that is going to be a fly ball center field C. So nobody will score. So he couldn't even get the he couldn't even get the tying run home on that, or uh, the uh, not that it wouldn't be the tying run, but he couldn't even get him down by one with a 
fly ball with a sack fly. Andre the Hawk Dawson gets a 3-7, and that is going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. And he's out 6-3. The uh, 1983 National Leaguers, though, do get a run. And so the score is 3-1, to one, 1933 National League leading. And they will take Rodgers out. So Rodgers pitched um, four innings. He allowed five hits and three earned runs. And they're going to bring in a relief pitcher for Rodgers. You know what? We're going to bring in... Bill Dolly. So Bill Dolly's going to come in for the 1983 National League. And he will be dealing to Dick Bartell to lead off the bottom of the fifth inning. And Dick Bartell gets a single. Dick Bartell's a, uh, on with a single. Dolly, the first guy he faces, he gives up a hit. Pepper Martin gets a 2-7. And a 2-7, guess what, is going to be a single double asterisk. And so the 1933 National League doesn't want to leave anything on the table. They, The first two guys Dolly faces, he allows them to reach base. There's runners at the corners with only one out. Bill Terry is up. He gets a 1-8. That's a single double asterisk. And another run comes in. And now the 1933 National League leads 4-1. to We'd left the O'Doul up. And the O'Doul stool gets a 5-6, which is going to be a pop-out to second. They really needed that. And uh, more importantly, what they need now is uh, a double play or a strikeout or another pop-out. But Chucky Klein is the batter. It's going to be hard to get that against him. That is a 111, and that is going to be a fly ball right field B. So that scores the runner on third. And another run comes in. And that is Pepper Martin. Pepper Martin scores on that. And two runs are in here. With Dolly having given up. Let's see. He's given up three hits. And two earned runs already. And it is 5-1. 1933 National League. And Wally Berger is up. And he gets 3-4. And that is going to be a single. Wally Berger getting a base hit. Dolly has just been taken apart. He's been he's just been systematically dismantled. And Gabby Hartnett is up and he gets a strikeout. And um, is that uh, that is three outs? But the 1933 team gets. Uh, Gets two runs? Wait a minute, they only got two runs. Yeah, they got, yes, they did. They got two runs, and so they have a 5-1 to one lead. As we go to the top of the sixth, with uh, uh, Dale Murphy up. Schumacher, they're going to keep Schumacher out there. He's just too dominant. They don't want to take a chance on what might happen, even though this is an all-star type competition. 2-4 is going to be a walk, though. Mighty Dale gets aboard with a walk. So Schumacher walks Dale Murphy, which gives way to Michael Jack Schmidt. And he gets a 3-6, and that's a walk. So now Schumacher is falling apart. And uh, you you got to believe that they will be thinking about that bullpen now. They didn't have any activity up up until now, but now they are going to think about that, and they are going to get Lon Warnicky up in the bullpen for the 1933 National League. And Gary Carter up, and he gets a 2-6, and that is a double to left field. 
and that's going to score at least one run. And uh, let's see if it's going to score any more. Uh, Dale Murphy comes in as the first run. And uh, Schmidt, let's see what Schmidt's running is. Running 1 to 14. I think with no outs, they're going to keep it just like that. They're just going to let the runners uh, stay at second and third with Daryl Evans out. And Daryl Evans gets a 2 6, which is a strikeout. So that's the first out. And Schumacher has struck out his fourth guy, and that's what I got. George Hendrick is the batter. He gets a 3-2, and that is going to be a single to left field. Um, let's see if that will score another guy. It does score Schmidt. And will it score Carter? Carter, you got to believe Carter's not a big runner either. Nope, he's even worse. He's 1-10, to so they'll just leave it at that, and they are going to take Schumacher out. There is one out. I have one out here. Uh, so he goes five and a third. Schumacher does. And uh, Lon Warnicke is going to be the new pitcher. Lon Warnicke in 1933 was 18 and 13 with a two earned run average. The problem with the National League team of 1933 is that whoever you bring in is going to have been a starting pitcher. As, you know, relief wasn't really a big thing back then, but with the National League team of 1983, there are specific relief pitchers who were put on the team. So anyway, uh, that does score uh, two. That's the second run, and they're going to keep runners at uh, the corners. I believe, yes. Yeah, Carter will stop at third, and that brings up Ozzy Smith, the Wizard of Oz. And the Wizard of Oz gets a ground ball shortstop B. They didn't have the infield in, so the run does score, and now Ozzy Smith is the runner at first base. They get three runs here, and it is now 5-4. So this is a very good game. The 1933 team ahead, 5-4, and Glenn Hubbard up. He had a big hit before. He gets a 5-7, and it looks like he's going to get another big hit right there. It is going to be a double. And are they going to score that guy? Now, that guy happens to be um, George Hendrick. Let's see if Hendrick could run. Hendrick is a 1 to 13, you know, and this is to uh, center field. The center fielder's arm is a negative 1, so it would be 1 to 12. With Tim Raines up, I'm going to let Tim Raines bat. I'm going to say, let's not try to score him. And that's going to be a 6 6 batting left. And that is going to be a single that knocks in at least one run. And now it is a tie game. Uh, Tim Raines with a key single that uh, that scores Hendrick. And now is Hubbard a good enough runner to make it? And it's 1 to 12 on Hubbard. So no, he is. <laughs> the answer is no, he is not. And Warnicke has given up like two hits, I think, since coming on. And um, that brings up Andre the Hawk Dawson. And he gets a 4-8. And that is going to be a fly ball out. And I believe that that is... That is only... Is that only one out? That might be... No, that's the that's the third out. So, uh, but they do tie the game. the uh, The nineteen eighty three National Leaguers did get four runs right there, and so now we have a tie game at five all going to the bottom of the sixth. Uh, Dolly came on last inning, and he got he got a little bit roughed up, but they're going to keep him out there. 
Frankie Frisch is the batter. He gets a 610. And 610 is going to be, he would be batting left. And that is a fly ball to center. The center fielder is a 1E6. That is a three. And uh, that is going to be a fly ball. So Frisch gets an F8. This, there might be plenty of chances for the bench players to play in this game. Um, Chick Hafey is the batter. He gets a 3-6, which is um, a walk. And that brings Dick Bartell up. One out, one on. He gets a 5-6, batting right. That is going to be a ground ball, shortstop, double play. So the old 6-4-3 does him in. And no runs come in. We go to the top of the seventh inning in a tied ball game at five apiece. Um, and Dale Murphy is the batter. We aren't going to take him out of the game, but we will try to start making replacements. That is going to be a single. So Dale Murphy getting a, getting a hit. Here in the seventh, off of Warnicky, third hit, I've got him giving up. Mike Schmidt, the third baseman, gets a 6'10". That is going to be a fly ball to center field. Uh, the center fielder for their team is a 2E10. That is a 12, and that's a 7. And that's going to be an E2. So Mike Schmidt is... A board, let's see. Yeah, that's a two base air which moves uh, Murphy over to um, third base. And that was an E8. And um, let's see. Let's see who we've got here. Place Schmidt at second base with Pedro Guerrero as the runner and um, with Gary Carter as the batter that's due up. And he gets a 110, which is a fly ball right field B. So that scores the runner on third. That is only the first out though. That's a sack fly. Warnicky giving up a hit. Or giving up um giving up the run. Daryl Evans is gonna be the batter. They are going to let's see. They're gonna pinch hit for Daryl Evans. Pinch hit Al Oliver for him. So Al Oliver is going to come on and pinch hit for Daryl Evans, and he will go in and play first base when they go back to the field. That is a 4-6, and that is going to be a ground ball, first base B, two out. And George Hendrick is the batter, and they are going to pinch hit for George Hendrick. They will. Uh, they'll uh, pinch hit um, Leon Durham. He's a terrible right fielder. He's a bit, much better first baseman, but he's going to come on. He's going to pinch hit and play right field. And he gets a 3-5, which is going to be a strikeout. So Warnicky strikes out a guy. And, but the, um, looks like they only scored one run. So they took the lead, the 1983 team did. So it's a 6-5 to five game right now. 
they're going to take Bill Dolly out of the game. They've seen enough of Dolly. So he goes two. He allows four hits and two earned runs. Smith will be the new pitcher for the National League, for the 1983 National League. And Pepper Martin is the batter. Uh, let's see if he needs replacing. He is the third baseman for the team. They are not going to do that because they have to. They're down by a run. They do have a replacement, a possible replacement, but they're not going to use him right now. Pepper Martin is up. He gets a 6 10. And that is going to be a fly ball to center field. The center fielder is a 1E6. That is a 4. Probably going to be an out. That is. So that's an F8 for Pepper Martin. Which brings up Bill Terry. And Bill Terry gets a 2 7, which is a single. Bill Terry has three hits today, by the way. He's three for four. He's been a fire in their face. Smith giving up his first hit. Lefty O'Doul, and O'Doul is the DH right now. It's really hard for the National League to replace somebody because they have to come back. They have to hope they can come back. That is a 3-5, and uh, that's going to be a fly ball right field. F9, there's two down, and uh, Chucky Klein is the batter. He is the right fielder. I guess they will pinch hit for him. Paul Wainer will be the new batter, and he will go in at right field. And there's a runner aboard with two down, and he gets a 5-3, and that is going to be a um, ground ball to the pitcher. Lee Smith is a 3-E-0, that's a 10. So a 10, and we're going to have to roll the dice for his air rating, 8. And that is going to be a ground ball. So he's out. One to three. The uh, 1933 team gets no runs in the seventh. We go to the top of the eighth. Top of the eighth, the 1983 team is up. They're going to take out Lon Warnicky and bring in another uh, pitcher. So close the book on Warnicky. Let's see, five and... <coughs> Five and a third, two thirds, two and two thirds he goes. And they're going to bring in Bill Hallahan. And Bill Hallahan is going to face Ozzie Smith, except maybe not. We might pinch hit four and play, uh, put in a replacement for Ozzy Smith. Let's see if they, it's going to be Dickie Thon. So Dickie Thon will come in and play for Ozzy Smith, and he will also pinch hit for him. And he gets a 311 against the lefty, and that's going to be a Foul out to third base. One out, and Glenn Mother Hubbard is up. He gets a 110, and that is going to be a single. So uh, another guy that's not having a bad day at all is Hubbard. He is also three for four, and he has a double. So he's aboard with one down, and Tim Raines is the batter. He gets a 5-8. Uh, 
Um, and that's going to be a ground ball third base B. So now he's aboard. And Andre Dawson is up. And Andre Dawson gets a 6-7, uh, which is a walk. The Hawk gets a walk. And that's issued by Hallahan. There are two runners on for the 83 team with two down and Mighty Dale up. And he gets a 2-9, which is going to be a ground ball shortstop. So that's going to be 6-3. No runs come in for the 1983 years, and we go to the bottom of the eighth. And Lee Smith will, you know what? We're going to take Lee Smith out, and we're going to bring in, because they have at least another closer. They're going, and again, the 1983 team has a lot more pitchers to pick from. They've got a lot more players and pitchers that they can pick from. Um, they will bring in Jesse Orozco. So Jesse Orozco is coming in. Lee Smith goes one inning. He gives up one hit and no runs. And uh, I believe Wally Berger is the batter for the National League. Let's see if they're going to change that, if they're going to. Bring somebody else in. So they will let Wally Berger bat. There is no replacement for him available. And he gets a 5-5. Five, five, and that is going to be a strikeout. Berger with the K. And, um, of course, Orozco with the K. One down, Gabby Hartnett is up. He gets a 4-5. That is going to be a double, I believe. No, it's going to be a single. Single. But it is a base hit. Hartnett is aboard. Orozco gave up a hit. That's his first hit allowed. But he just got on the scene. Franklin Frisch is up. He gets a 4-5, and that's going to be, he would be batting left. Or no, he would be batting right, and that is also going to be a single double asterisk. So now the 1933 team is that close to tying the game. Much as it pains me, I am going to bring the infield in. I hate bringing the infield in, but I ha think I have to do it here. Because it's 6-5, 1983 team, and there's a runner at third with only one out, and Chick Hafey is the batter. And he gets a 2-9, and 2-9 against the lefty is going to be a ground ball shortstop A. Yeah, so this runner goes to second, and there is two out, because the infield was in. And that brings Dick Bartell up. It's all up to Dick Bartell, but is it? Dick Bartell is the shortstop. Let's see if there's a guy that can play for him and also pinch hit. Let Dick Bartell hit because this is, they've got to try to tie the game. 4 8, he is a righty, and that is going to be a walk that loads the bases. So, um, really, Orozco has been terrible since coming on. And that brings Pepper Martin to the plate with the bases loaded and two down. And he gets a 4-7. And that is going to be a ground ball first base. So, Pepper Martin gets out. And the National League is going to have to hope for the bottom of the ninth to be uh, to bring them <coughs> what they need, which is one run at least. Pedro Guerrero is the batter. He came on in relief of Mike Schmidt earlier. Bill Hallahan is still going to be out there. That's a 4-9. And that is going to be 
a home run. Pedro Guerrero. Pedro Guerrero goes deep. So, um, yeah. Now the National League of the... Um, of the of 1933 is going to have to get at least two runs in the ninth because Hallahan just gave up his first hit and his first earned run and Gary Carter is up and Gary Carter gets a 5-9 and that is going to be a ground ball shortstop X their shortstop is a um uh, 2E44. That is a 9, so let's see what that is. And it's 44, so that isn't good. That's going to be an E1. So Carter gets a board. Carter gets a board with an um, error on the shortstop. And uh, Al Oliver is the batter. He came on for Daryl Evans. Ground ball into a double play. So, um, ground ball to first base. So, it's a 3-4-1, I would think, double play. There's two out. And Leon Durham is the batter. And he gets three seven, which is a fly ball to center field. So the nineteen eighty three National League came close to getting a run in the ninth, but they didn't. So, or wait a minute, yes they did. They did get well, yeah, I didn't record. They did get a home run. They came close to getting an, uh, possibly another run. It looks like they were getting ready for a big rally, but they did get a run. So now the nineteen 33 National League needs two runs right here, and they're going to take a Roscoe out. They've seen enough of Roscoe. He was terrible. So Roscoe went one inning. He gave up two hits and one earned, one earned run. No, he didn't give up an earned run, but he almost did. So it was a close call. Let's just say that. It was a close call. So the National League is going to bring in Gary Lavelle. And this is the last guy that they have that's a true reliever. So um, so it, the, I guess the long story short is he better shut him down. Otherwise, he's going to be pitching till his arm falls off. Bill Terry is going to be the batter. Now, he's the first baseman, and he's a really good hitter. They're not going to take him out. They need a run. 6-6 six, six, um, is going to be a strikeout. So Bill Terry goes down on strikes. And that was a key strikeout for Lavelle. Lefty O'Doul. Again, you can't take him out. They need runs. 3-9 is going to be a strikeout. So Lavelle strikes out the first two guys he faces, trying to seal this thing down for the 1983 National League. And Paul Wainer is the batter. And he gets a 1-9. And that is going to be a ground ball to the first baseman. And that is it. And uh, this was another good game. The 1983 NL beat the 1933 NL 6-5. Very good game. Um, I would say that the MVP of this game... Um, hmm. Whew, that's a hard one. But I think I would say it is... Ooh, man. It's hard to get a single guy because, I mean, everybody contributed to the runs that were scored. You know what? I, I think I got to go with uh, 
No, because he didn't score any runs or knock in any runs. Um, I suppose you got to go with Dale Murphy. It's got to be Dale Murphy. He had two singles, a walk, and he scored two runs. So uh, Dale Murphy is your MVP for the 1983 National League team uh, in beating the uh, 1933 National League team. And that means that the... The um, now I'm I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to do one game or whether I'm going to do a best of three series, but it is going to force a matchup of 1983, the 1983 American League against the 1983 National League, and that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z Bob Zolke signing off.